this short video, I want to have a look at why water is so useful when it comes to systems like gas-fired central heating. It has thermal properties that just make it a perfect material for this sort of system. Uh, all the way from our domestic radiators, in fact, through to power station cooling systems and all sorts of size scales in between. Water is an amazing material and its thermal properties are just part of that story. Hi. So let's just take a look at water as this wonderful material that runs our heating systems and indeed our cooling systems. Uh, it all boils down to something called the specific heat capacity. And water, it turns out, has quite a high value. Now that means that we have to put a lot of energy in in order to heat water up, but conversely it means that when it cools back down again it gives out a lot of energy. So let's have a look at this in a little bit more, um, a little bit more detail. So I'm going to scribble some things down on my pad and then I'll show you what I'm doing. So uh, we can define our heat capacity in a very simple equation uh, which looks at the heat energy that we put into something and we divide that by uh, the rise in temperature that we observe and we also divide it by the mass of whatever material it is we're looking at. So let's just have a look at this. So there's our simple equation for heat capacity. So the heat energy that goes in uh, is measured in units called joules and you'll remember when we looked at water boiling in a kettle uh, we looked at what a joule was, a measure of energy um, and then, as I say, we divide that by the rise in temperature. And this is, um, to all intents and purposes, this we're going to use the centigrade scale for. So it's the rise in temperature in degrees centigrade. And then we're also dividing that heat energy by mass. And typically uh, we'll be looking at uh, a unit of a kilogram of water, which to a pretty good approximation uh, is a litre of water. So that's our specific heat capacity and because of what I've, what I've just said about um, the units involved in this, our heat capacity is going to have units of joules uh, per kilogram per degree centigrade. So there we are. Those are the units, joules per kilogram per degree centigrade. Now, as I say, water has quite a high value uh, of this. It's, um, in fact, it's a little less than 4,200 joules per kilogram uh, per degree centigrade. So in other words, uh, for a kilogram or a litre approximately of water, if we want to heat it up to a typical radio temperature, say 50 degrees centigrade, uh, from room temperature, say 20 degrees centigrade, that's a change in temperature um, of um, 30 degrees centigrade, right? Um, so one litre um, heated over 30 degrees centigrade would require 30 times 4,200 joules of energy, which as you can imagine uh, is quite a lot. Uh, in fact, what is it? We could probably do that maths in our head. We ought to be able to. Um, it's about 
13,000. Have I got that right? Thereabouts. So that's a lot of joules of energy. And as I say, water is particularly high in its value of specific heat capacity. If I write a few more things on here, um, so let's stick in a few more materials now. So I'm just going to scribble down the values for copper, which is a common um, household material. It's found in all our mains cables, uh, for instance. Um, what else have we got in our house? Uh, well, we've got a lot of brick, of course, which is a ceramic material that a lot of houses um, are constructed from. And a lot of us will actually have oil filled electric radiators, I suppose, rather than um, rather than gas fired water boilers. Um, and they all have specific heat capacity measured in exactly these same units. Sorry, it's a bit wobbly up here. Um, so copper, much, much lower than water. Water, remember, was 4,200. Copper is only 385. So in other words, it takes a lot less heat energy to um, heat up a block of copper by a given rise of temperature uh, than it does water. And in fact, brick is, is lower than water. Again, brick is only about 840 joules per kilogram of brick per degree centigrade rise in temperature. Oil's a bit higher, but still it's less than half of water. And bricks in um, heating systems are fairly common and uh, oil is as well. So these are all materials that we use in, in, um, in heating. But as I say, water is probably the best. So let's go back and look at water again. And I'll just write its value on my list, along with the others. So I've just put water down at the bottom there, 4,200 joules, right? So you can see that it's going to take a lot more energy to heat up a kilogram of water than any of those other fairly common household materials. Uh, and that has a downside, of course. That means that we're going to have to use a lot of energy to heat our radiators up. We've already done a quick calculation for each kilogram, each litre of water in our central heating system, it's a lot. But the big plus of that is that the water will flow around our radiators at whatever temperature we've set it at. So let's stick with 50 degrees centigrade as our example. And for every degree it cools down, it's letting out that same amount of energy. So it's letting out 4,200 uh, joules for every degree centigrade that it cools down. So in other words, there's a lot of energy that it can be pumping out into the rooms in our house. And still, when it returns through the pump to the um, boiler, it's still at a fairly elevated temperature. So all the radiators in our house, for instance, are going to be within a few degrees uh, of that 50 degrees centigrade because they've got a lot of heat capacity available uh, in the water that's flowing through them. And that's what makes it such a great system uh, for radiators. And just to give you um, a few other bits and pieces here, uh, the, um, the calorie, which is a unit you've probably come across in the past for measuring energy, was actually defined uh, formally as the energy needed to raise a kilogram, sorry, a gram, so a thousandth of a kilogram of water from 14.5 to 15.5 degrees centigrade. It sounds very specific, but that's because the um, heat capacity is not precisely constant uh, with temperature. 
Um, the other thing you might like to know is that ice just below 0 degrees centigrade actually has a specific heat that is only half that of water. So that's all well and good, um, but what can you do in terms of trying this out? Um, an obvious thing, of course, is to go back to the kettle experiment. So measure the amount of water you put in your kettle, having looked underneath first for how many joules it delivers. It'll give you a number of watts, which remember is just joules per second. And then time, how long it takes your water to raise its temperature from 20 degrees centigrade up to um, boiling point. It's a very crude and approximate measure, of course, because your kettle is losing heat to the air around the outside all the time. But uh, it is a way that you might get a ballpark figure, an approximate figure of your own for the specific heat of the water in your kettle. Give it a try and see what happens. Bye for now.